For lecture 6.1, we're going to cover electron fill patterns, which will eventually lead us to understanding electron configuration. The quantum numbers that have been presented thus far are going to lead us to electron configurations. So here are the three rules for ground state orbital occupants by electrons. Ground state is the lowest energy state. First, when electrons are added to an atom, they enter the lowest energy available orbital. That's because Mother Nature seeks the lowest energy state. Second, no two electrons can have the same four quantum numbers. This is known as the Pauli exclusion principle. Just like two objects cannot occupy the same space on the macro scale, two electrons cannot occupy the same space on the micro scale. The last rule says that electrons occupy different orbitals in a sublevel with the same spin rather than pair until each orbital has one electron. This is known as Hund's rule. When electrons are paired in the same orbital, this increases their energy. So to have the lowest energy state, the electrons like to spread out and have the same spin. Depending on if the rules are followed or not, we have some names for atomic states. The ground state has all electrons at the lowest energy. The electrons in the same sublevel are spread out as much as possible, obeying Hund's rule, and these unpaired electrons point in the same direction. An excited state is higher energy, and this is when you have an electron with an empty slot below it, or unpaired electrons pointing in different directions, or a sublevel with paired electrons and empty orbitals. Not allowed means that two electrons are in the same box, which represents an orbital, pointing in the same direction. That means that we have given them the same four quantum numbers. So here is an example of ground state. If you look at the oxygen atom, it will have eight protons and eight electrons if it is neutral. So I'm going to start with the eight protons here in the nucleus, and I'm going to add eight electrons. These boxes represent the different sets of orbitals, and each orbital may have two electrons. So here I am adding eight electrons. There's the first one, in the lowest energy level, pointing upward. In order to stay at ground state, the next one I add also must be in the 1s orbital, but with the opposite spin, so pointing down. The third electron I will put in the 2s orbital. It doesn't matter if I point it up or down, but the fourth one I need to point in the opposite direction and give the opposite spin. Now for electron number five. I will put one electron in one of the two p orbitals. Here's the time to remember Hund's rule. We have orbitals in a sublevel that are at the same energy, multiple orbitals. So remember, we need to spread out the electrons and point them the same way. We can pair them only when we have to. So here's electron five, six, and seven. Do you see how they are spread out among the suborbital and pointed the same direction? Electron number eight, I should put in one of these orbitals, and this time I need to give it opposite spin. This isn't the only representation of the ground state. There's actually multiple ones. I could put one, two, three, four in the lowest energy, and this time I could start with my electron pointed downward in the 2p orbital. So that would be electron 5, 6, 7. And this time I could put the upward electron in the middle orbital. This is also oxygen's ground state representation. How does this relate to electron configuration? Well, we have two electrons in the 1s, two electrons in the 2s and four electrons in the 2p.
So we would write this 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Here's an example of some excited states. Electron 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Clearly this is an excited state because we have an electron in the 3s orbital, yet we have empty slots below it. So if we could flip that electron spin and tuck it into a 2p orbital, that would move us from excited state to ground state. Here's another example. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is a violation of Hund's rule because within the same sublevel, we have paired electrons and an empty orbital. There is repulsion when electrons pair in an orbital, so we want to spread them out and point them the same direction, not pair them and have empties. Here's one last type of excited state. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one's very subtle. It's an excited state because although we have unpaired electrons, they have a different spin in the same sublevel. And that's going to be an increase in energy as opposed to if they had the same spin. What about not allowed? Not allowed is a violation of the Pauli exclusion principle, where no two electrons may have the same four quantum numbers. Remember that the quantum number set is a description of the electron cloud that that electron occupies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are electrons in the same orbital with the same direction of spin. They violate the Pauli exclusion principle. If I look at the quantum numbers, this is in the 2p. So n will be 2, l will be 1, m sub s will be plus 1 half, and I will select that particular m sub l for that orbital to be 0. If I do the quantum numbers of the other electron in that orbital, they are exactly the same. So just as two large objects cannot occupy the same space at the same time, Two electrons cannot occupy the same orbital cloud with the same spin. So here is a question for you. You are being asked to name this state. Everything looks good there. This is a D sublevel because we have five orbitals. So take a look at that row and decide what the state is. Here is another state to name. Everything looks good, and the important area would be this 3D sublevel right here. Notice we have pair, pair, lone electron, lone electron, empty. And finally, for speed, these are grouped together. Please describe this electron occupation followed by this electron occupation. And pay special attention to this particular orbital right here.